But for today, we're going to be listening or thinking to these ver- thinking about these verses here in verses 37 and 38, 39. Paul has just talked about who shall separate us from the love of Christ and lists things. Then he says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's hard sometimes when you've been doing uh, scripture in little by little by little, but today this sort of this gives us an opportunity to bring things all together. There is a kind of a three-stage lock or a a lock that if you open up all of the different parts of it, it opens it all up. And that's in a sense what I think is going on here. Verses 28, verse 31 and 37 bring to us one general truth from Romans 8. If you listen, Romans 8, 28 says a verse that you would know that we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good to those for those who are called according to his purpose. So there's the all things working together. And then in verse 31, it says, "Who? what shall we say to these things? These things, if God is for us, who can be against us? And then in verse 37, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And then he continues to give us a list of reasons why we should be completely sure There's something here about this absolute, complete provision. In all these things we are more than conquerors. Now, those two words, more than, are very important. Meaning that if we take these three verses, 28, 31, and 37, and we put them together, we get a a convincing argument why you and I should be completely at peace in every situation in life. We are more than conquerors. We are those who are absolutely sure that it's okay. Because then Paul goes on to say, I am sure. And then he gives a list of a number of things, really six things. There's death nor life, angels, neither good nor bad, present or future, heaven or hell, powers, that is angelic powers and others. Then a catch-all statement, Nothing else. (laughs) So when you stop and think about it, he says that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. Yes. What shall we then say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And then in all these things, we are more than conquerors. How are you and I to look at our life? We need to look at our life through these windows or through this one window of three panes. Because as you look at your circumstances through this, then you can see things more clearly. You see, everybody looks at their life through something. Whatever their problem, whatever their trouble, whatever their situation, they look at it through some set of beliefs, some set of understandings, and they come to a conclusion. It's either good or bad, it's happy or unhappy, it's, it's a, whatever their conclusion is, is based on what way they look at it. As a Christian, you and I are to look at our lives through these three verses, at least here from Romans. We can draw in other things, but essentially for this, the purpose of our talk this morning. And and that's really, really helpful. So having used, as it were, the three keys or the three stages to open up the door to us, then we realize, so what are all these things then that we're facing? Well, in a sense, Paul's been talking about the things, you know, what shall separate us from the love of Christ, or who shall separate us? And he says, shall shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, or sword? And these are all sorts of the situations that one could experience. Now, you might say, well, I'm not experiencing sword. I'm not experiencing persecution. No. But then, what about these next group that he talks about? Well, first of all, he says, death nor life. Even though he says we die, we don't need to be worried. Jesus said, outside the grave of Lazarus, he said that 
Even though we die, by believing in him, yet shall we live. So death doesn't hold nothing of fear for the Christian. Life with Christ, death with Christ as well. And then he goes on, he says, well, what about angels? So we've got good or bad. And I think that's what's meant by this. The angels, nor angels, nor rulers. There, there's, there's nothing, either the evil agents of Satan, they cannot separate us. There's nothing they can do that will separate us from the love of Christ. The present, which we know, or the future, which we do not know, that which we have experienced already and that which we haven't yet experienced, he says, no, no, neither of those things can separate you from the love of Christ. And then it talks about, you know, the height nor depth. And it's more than likely here he's referring to heavens and hell. Location. It doesn't matter your location. It doesn't matter where you are. Psalm 139 makes it very, very clear that even though we go you know, to the ends of the earth, even there God's hand is upon us. You know, where shall I go from thy presence, as the psalmist says. And then the next one is powers, nor, nor powers. Well, powers usually has something to do with angelic powers, the forces out there, whatever forces there are, we don't need to be afraid of them. They can't separate us from the love of Christ. And then finally he says, nothing else in all creation, which is the catch-all statement. And you know, I say to you today, I mean, what are the people in your life that, that cause you trouble? What are the circumstances of your life that's causing you trouble? What are the needs that you have? What are the concerns that you have? None of those things, absolutely nothing, whatever you want to put in that space can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And what is the love of God? Well, this word here is used, this is the word agapes, the word agapeo, and uh, we speak of it often, the agape. It's that special love of God. It's the love that is spoken of in 1 Corinthians 13, and which is defined in, in characteristic there, patient, kind, good, long-suffering, all of those things. So if you think about it, nothing can separate you from the patience of God, from the kindness of God, the goodness of God, the long-suffering of God. Nothing can separate you from that. And all of those qualities of love are to be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. So that in Christ you have all of those things. God comes to you through his Son and he comes in patience and kindness and goodness. Always, always. Love never fails. The love of God never fails. How that love reveals itself, how God reveals his love to us through Christ it is sometimes different. It may come in the form of a person today. It may come in the form of this little side-by-side -side today. It may come in, in the form of Scripture. It may come in different ways as His Holy Spirit brings into your life the love of God controlling all things for your good. I think it's just such a reassurance to us. It's really just hearing again in the midst of our lives, no matter what you are facing, no matter where you are, no matter how difficult things may become, God's love and God's expressing his love to you will never change. In fact, it will continue. It will be as real then. In fact, it may even be more real. And I think one of the reasons why that we discover that we are more than conquerors is that in all of these troubles that he talks about, we actually grow they become the very basis through which we become better, more Christ-like people, so that we actually conquer, we rise up. And as we rest in the Lord, we continue to rest up. So this is just so amazing. And, and all I can do is just urge you to go back and take Romans 8 and just read through it again. As I've said earlier, Romans is regarded as, as one of those most precious books of the whole Bible. And Romans 8 is regarded, as it were, as the very point of the diamond. And Romans is the diamond. 
that shines so brightly and reflects the wonderful grace of God. And I hope that this has been helpful to you as it's been helpful to me to take the time to slow down and really think about these things a little bit more this week. And we, I hope you have a good weekend and we'll catch up at the beginning of next week. If you're following me, that is, on a day today. And if not, just hope that the Lord continues to bless you in the midst of your life.